Welcome to Art Day. Well, as you can see, this is not my usual angle of uh, recording videos and I'm doing a voiceover because I messed up royally. For one, I didn't have my uh, overhead camera um, recording for the first part of the drawing and painting. And second, um, I did not record audio because I, I didn't know how long this would take in real time. So I was kind of thinking, okay, I will probably have to use a little bit of a time lapse and um, record a voiceover for it. So I mainly messed up with the camera. Um, I'm going to have the overhead camera working around minute 11 ish so the angle will change um, as you can see from the title today i thought i'd go back to board game art so i had a show uh previously called draw for initiative where um uh watercolor and ink paintings were done for board games and I kind of wanted to go back to that but not have the old format and pretty much just lay that to rest. So I picked a game that Jörn and I have been playing a lot recently. It's called Kodama 3D as it says in the title and I kind of wanted to do um, maybe like a fan, a fan art kind of thing not necessarily scenes from when we played because uh, this game did not really um, well play into a scenery that was particularly funny at the table that I could paint and I went for um, uh, fan art instead using ink and watercolor and uh, I just gave it a twist of my own cartoony style. And I wanted to go for a style and a kind of picture that you could frame and hang on the wall and it would look funny and pretty. And only people who knew or asked uh, would know that this is actually related to a board game. So uh, I picked an orange Kodama because, well, orange is my favorite color. And one of the Kodamas in the game, <clears throat> sorry, is orange. So I started with a Indian yellow and then shaded it with orange. Um, I went for a rather loose watercolory look. I didn't want this to look... Um, very smooth like you would maybe have an outcome with say markers for example I definitely wanted to go for the quote-unquote blotchy look of watercolors and I did um, I did uh, combine a couple of watercolor sets for one the Schminke Akademie Academy watercolors. That's the one you can see uh, in frame. I got two sets there. The smaller one that I'm actually using right now with those yellows is um, my older one and I want to have those uh, little pans used up before I use the same on the palette that that is more in the background there. Uh, why I brought in the palette in the background is because I wanted an olive green and I didn't necessarily want to um, mix a lot of colors since I wanted this to look very cartoony and not um, realistic looking. So I went for very bold, very clean colors, only so much mixing of colors on my own. And uh, that is why I brought in that other palette because I wanted to use that said olive green. Um, I went for one Kodama only and orange at that because why not? But I did put in all the features that also um, play into the game. So if you don't know the game, either look it up on the web or if you want to be a little bit more 
patient. There will be an episode uh, on Board Game Island for Kodama, so you can then see how this game plays and uh, why I like it so much. And um, you can you can find out all about the game then. So I'm bringing in my second set of um, watercolors, so second kind of company. These are the Kuretake Gansai Tambi uh, watercolors, very highly pigmented, very creamy watercolors. And I use the orange uh, of that particular set to shade my Kodama. And I'm shading towards the lower left hand side because I think this is just a very nice look. I I kind of liked it. Like the face is way more bright and the belly is also way more bright. Um, I think that just led to a very bright and goofy kind of looking painting in the end. And um, I, it just works well, I think, with... Um, putting the shadows on the lower left hand side. You will see in the end um, why I might, well, get to that impression. Um, I did uh, draw, blah, oh, talking, I did dry off my painting every so often. Uh, later on when I'm switching to the overhead camera, I'm, I did actually cut most of those parts where I did uh, blast the painting with my blow dryer. I didn't use my blow dryer whenever I finished a section, but every so often if I had to go next to a section that was rather wet or that I just had painted, I just gave it a big uh, quick heat blast to, well, not have the colors uh, flow on the paper too much and therefore create weird mixtures of colors that I didn't want to have. So just to make sure and be on the safe side I used my blow dryer quite a bit. And before I painted I actually did draw out my scenery. You can see currently uh, next to that arm that I'm currently painting there is a tiny little orangey sketch underneath um, and I used a colored uh, graphite pencil so so they, they are called I think um, pilot color you know it's on my blog uh, for for this post uh, for this video there's uh, all the materials all the supplies that I use they are listed and uh, I also listed that uh, pencil that I used for outlining and drawing in my sketch. It's um, actually a mechanical pencil and I do have a couple of shades of these um, and I like to use them if I don't want to have uh, any of my lines showing. So it being me having a drawing where I put ink lines on top and uh, then go in with uh, liquid ink or uh, watercolors or even just pencils, colored pencils. If I don't want to have my sketch lines there, I like to use these pencils um, go with ink on top, like with my Copic Multiliner, for example, and then erase the lines before coloring in or painting in. This time around, I did um, watercolor my sketch first and then ink it. And I didn't have to erase uh, most of my lines. I had to erase a few, but most of them were actually covered in uh, watercolor and since I layered quite a bit uh, you couldn't really see them uh, that much. I had cleaned up my sketch too so I didn't have 50 lines for one particular part say the foot that I'm currently um, coloring. I didn't have 50 lines it's maybe like two or three and I could hide them well enough with those orange and yellow watercolors and I used a very light touch when I did actually outline my uh, Kodama and all the features of the game here. So it's just a combination of the supplies, so what kind of pencil I used, 
And the way that I approached this painting uh, with what supplies I used on top, uh, when I did what, all of that. Um, talking about... Uh, what did I want to say? <laughs> oh, God. I just had a train of thought and I totally forgot. Oh, no. Um, oh, gosh. I'm, I, I might remember. I might not. So... Sorry about that. Oh yeah, uh, what I wanted to say with the blending, I used a medium wet brush. Um, I did always wet my paper before I put in the first layer of color. And then after that, I did go with way less water just to be able to direct the flow of the watercolor paint a little more. And uh, then I brought in just a damp brush with clear water as you can see here and pulled the yellow into the orange and vice versa to, to just have a smoother transition and not these very harsh lines of where I put something down on the paper. <coughs> it's just a little more blendy. I do like the blotchy look of the watercolor uh, but I didn't want to have too much of that if you know what I mean. So we're almost there. I'm very very soon switching to my uh, overhead camera and then you don't have to look at this weird angle anymore. Good thing that I uh, remind uh, blah, that I remembered recording for my uh, vlog and uh, that is why I actually had that clip. So uh, I missed coloring the leaf and the... Um, but now I'm losing... Uh, now I'm missing the English word. The German one is Glühwürmchen. Um, firefly. That's the word. So I don't have footage of painting that because uh, I had already switched off my vlogging camera, thought I had enough of uh, footage as a teaser, uh, painted the leaf and also the firefly, uh, then took a little break to let things dry before going on painting that flower that I'm currently working on. And then I came back to the table, looked at my camera and was like, hmm, there is no red recording sign. So shoot, uh, I'm missing a bit of footage there. Uh, for the leaves, I'm, uh, yeah, for the leaves, the firefly and the flower here. I'm actually using this, the same colors that uh, they're uh, colored in in the game. So there's like a purplish pinkish flower. Uh, they do have very lovely permanent green leaves on their head. The kodamas are very cute. And uh, well, the firefly is yellow and brown and blue. Um, I did stay with the same color families, but I chose my own hues of that color. So in the game, for example, that leaf on top of the head of the Kodama is permanent green. I went with a way more yellowish uh, approach because I just like these shades. I just like warmer colors in general. Um, and I thought it would work really well with the orangey yellow of the Kodama and then have that flower in front of the leaf with the very cool tones be a kind of like a pop. So the main colors are warm colors and then there's a few bits and pieces that I chose cool shades for and that um, make some pop and I wanted I kind of wanted to have that flower be the feature um, that is standing out. So the features are the firefly, the flower, the caterpillar that the Kodama has in his hands. You can just see the white shape for now. And then there's mushrooms. So I, of all of those features, I wanted the flower to stand out and really pop and make this... Um, very vibrant and 
yeah, cartoonish looking, even more cartoonish looking because um, it's it it's just a cooler shade of colors, and against all of these warm colors that I'm using for all the other <coughs> excuse me features, this one just stands out. And I I thought this it would be really lovely to have the Kodama wear one of these flowers just like an accessory or something. Um, I thought it's cute, so I went for it. Uh, for most of the items that I painted, I used two or three shades. So um, it's like a, a light green and a dark green and uh, a light pink and now going to a dark almost purplish pink um for the, the the firefly i did actually just use one shade for each of the parts but i did have multiple layers on them so for the brown head for example there's two layers which creates light and shadow the uh, the uh, wings do you have like a partially colored bit so i uh watered down the leaf uh, the leaf why do i always want to say leaf it's a it's a wing so i watered all of it and then pulled in that light blue and didn't have enough on the brush to fill the whole section with light blue but it just fades out into white which i like a lot and the same goes with the butt of the firefly. There's just two layers of a lovely yellow there. Uh, for my caterpillar here, I'm using a warm-ish yellow. It's pretty much uh, middle of the spectrum. And I did only color those yellow sections partially. And then I did bring in just a damp brush and pull the color so that you have um, the illusion of light and shadow. So from the going from the right on the head of the caterpillar, that second yellow strip, you can see it best at uh, this camera angle. Uh, after that, I went on to the mushrooms, letting the caterpillar dry. Again, wetting down the whole surface. And I went for turquoise. Um, colors for the mushroom. Again, these are warm blues and I wanted to have everything warm, uh, like painted with warm shades except for two uh, parts, one of them being the flower. So I just went for my cluster of mushrooms starting with a very light turquoise and a little more bluish turquoise in tint and then for the caps of the mushrooms and for shading I used more of a darker and greenish tinted turquoise to just have a little bit of contrast but still be in the same family color. So on with that second kind of turquoise and you can see the difference instantly. Um, I'm, I will use that same color later on for shading too or just add another layer because I'm bringing in the first layer of shadows already towards the right hand side on that stem of the biggest mushroom. And then I just went with the same color for the caps on and the stems on the next mushroom switch to a smaller brush just to be able to really control where the color goes. Usually I like painting watercolors with the biggest brush possible and have a very loose style. So really have a very loose wrist when painting and not being as constrained. But for this style I had to have way more control and not have color flow everywhere. So that is when I use smaller brushes um, to very quote-unquote neatly color my items on the painting and I have my big old head in the frame again. Ah, 
it was actually pretty late it was maybe 6 p.m 7 p.m that i painted so i'm definitely experiencing a little bit of a brain fog there and not remembering or i'm just so in the zone when i don't have an audio uh, recording while i paint that i do lean forward a little more and just enjoy the painting process so much uh, that I forget that I do have a camera recording and that I should make sure that my big old head isn't in frame all the time and, well, you not being able to see what I actually do. So sorry about that. But on the other hand, this just shows how much I enjoy these kind of late afternoons or evenings or nights when I can paint and do not record audio for it. Um, it's a little bit of a different kind of a feel. It's way more, I want to say, zen-like. Um, but that that's not really correct. It, I'm way more in my head. I do have a podcast running and listening or um, an interview that is like two or three hours long. I do still have noise around me and I'm still paying attention to my surroundings and not just focusing on my painting. But still, it feels different than... Uh, when when I do have audio equipment um, while like for these videos having audio recordings and uh, being way more aware of what I want to convey pretty much more like a quote-unquote teacher mode if you know what I mean um, it's really hard to describe that uh, state that I'm in when I still am very aware of my surroundings and not, well, falling into the world of painting, but being on the edge of exactly that point where I go down that rabbit hole and I, I ignore everything around me and I'm just focusing on the painting. So there's kind of like three different stages of artwork um, for me, like uh, how, how I feel in these different kinds of stages, how I, when I work, how I work, what I use, what I don't use, all of that. And um, I like them all equally, I would say, but sometimes I'm just yearning or I'm missing a particular kind of state or environment that I'm in when I'm painting because I don't get the chance to do it too often. And that is due to time management and energy management. Uh, things just change there and I, I kind of miss it. I, I have to figure out how to get that back without draining my energy levels. Um, I will I will at one point probably figure it out, but for now, um, yeah, I, I just enjoy it even more um, when I when I don't have the opportunity too often to well have a certain kind of mental state when it comes to the painting process. So I went back to my flower. Uh, the pink petals did dry well enough and I added that center part. Uh, used quite a dark um, uh, reddish purple to shade and I used the same color that I used for shading the petals as the base color for that butt in the middle. So back to the caterpillar, switched to a smaller brush again. I don't even remember what size it is but it's like really really tiny. Uh, maybe one eighth, one tenth, one twelfth, I don't know. But I went in with a warm red and just um, 
painted in those lovely stripes and I do like those caterpillars. I think they look goofy, although they don't have a face. But uh, I think they're uh, kind of funny looking. I, I guess they're just very cute, um, witty creatures in the game. Yes, I do make up characters for um, the, uh, uh, the creatures in that game. And uh, well, I, I very much like the caterpillar. <laughs> to say I also made up characters for the fireflies and of course the kodamas not so much for the mushrooms and the flowers though but yeah I'm with with the red I'm actually base coating like the whole strip of the caterpillar and then I went on top with a second layer just to darken things up and towards the butt where I'm currently um, painting I did the same thing that I did with the yellows bringing in just a damp water brush no paint on it and just pulling the pigment uh, towards the bottom which uh, makes for a very nice soft gradient transition from light to dark because it's just uh, a matter of how intense the pigment is on the um, on the part of the paper so next thing is uh, that stem uh, that tree branch that the Kodama is sitting on because I think he's a naughty little guy or she, I actually think it's a she. Um, she is a naughty little girl and she's balancing herself at the end of a tree branch, um, just swinging her feet back and forth, playing with her friends <laughs> there and looking out into the world. So I pretty much have her sit on the end of a tree branch and before bringing in all, the, all of the greens for the leaves, uh, I did color the stem. And there is the second part of the painting where I have cool colors, like big items where I have cool colors. That brown here, that uh, Van Dyke sepia cool brown, is the second cool color. I used the same color on the head of the firefly, but it is so tiny that you don't really see um, the difference between cold and warm uh, shades very much. Um, you can definitely see it with the flower and with the tree branch. So I wanted to have one or two big pieces on this painting that are uh, not uh, painted with warm colors. So. Oh, also, this is my favorite brown. I do like cool browns, um, especially when I shade them with warm blues. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some um, dark indigo on top. And if you've been following me on the Beyond the Lines show for a while, you know this is just my favorite go-to combo when it comes to shading, almost having bits look black, but not flat, because black really flattens your painting or your colors, makes them kind of dull. And by combining either dark gray, purple, dark brown, or dark blue, you can achieve the same thing, have something look blackish, but rather rich and not as flat and dull as if you would use black. Don't get me wrong, I use black a lot, also black watercolor. But um, that is for very specific hues. So something desaturated, for, for example, or a monochrome black and white uh, piece. Of course, I'm using black then. But for anything that should be very vibrant and rich and saturated, I don't like to use black because it just is countering the effort of having something look, well, 
loud. And I wanted this to be a very loud and colorful painting. Um, the tree branch that brown section definitely is push, uh, gets pushed a little bit into the background, which I think is perfect because all the warm colors that I'm going to use on the leaves that I'm currently prepping um, pretty much push back that cold brown and the warm tones move into the foreground. So it, it's kind of subtle, I have to tell you. It's not super obvious, but I think it does move into the background quite a bit. So again, I'm using just a damp brush or a wet brush with a lot of water to dampen my paper. And that helps me, once I bring in color, that helps with letting the color flow. And uh, pretty much create a natural shade already. So I'm dabbing in the color where I want it to be um, darker or more saturated. And it you can see at the lower part of the screen that I just covered up with my big old head, the flow, uh, the watercolor was running and flowing outwards towards the edges of the paper. There, um, at that part, the, the color is way lighter. It, there's way less pigment, but it just gives a natural gradient transition towards the lighter parts of the painting. And I did start with my um, light green and with my olive green, but I will bring in a bit of, I think, the dark green and also, if I remember correctly, maybe a little indigo. I have to see once the footage uh, comes up. This, um, yeah, brain fog. It was late I, and I was kind of in the automatic mode of... Ah, yeah, okay. I used the um, olive green first and now I'm bringing in a little bit of a lighter uh, very much uh, yellowish kind of a warm grass green, if you know what I mean. Just dabbing it in at the edges and making things flow together nicely. Then I'm going back to uh, my water and I'm just damping that left hand side section and uh, well bringing in the green towards the brown but not having the two connect like all the way per se and again going in with my olive green so this is the darker green very carefully bring it up bringing it up to the orange kadama and then i'm going in with my lighter green dab 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 and then I'm just gonna let it do its thing. They're gonna mix and flow together. I don't have to direct the paint too much. Uh, went in with a second layer of the um, olive green just to darken it up because between the Kadama's legs, this is where the shadow is. So at this point, I'm intensifying the parts that are in shadow where there's not a lot of light hitting and of course I'm also making sure that the intensity of the colors that I use around are gradient that's why I just use a little bit of that light green again at the edge of the painting then I went in with a smaller brush just to clean up those edges I used a dark green that I also used on the leaf that is on top of the Kodama's head and I'm just pulling that down and there's a fly <laughs> flying on my desk she's gonna annoy me for a little bit it's just a little fruit fly but she just wanted to do some artwork as well. I don't know if she was attracted to the flyer, firefly on my painting. I don't know. Um, but she's... I'm, I'm gonna... Uh, well, whisk her away in a minute. So anything below the butt or the bottom of the Kodama is gonna get a little bit of that dark green. And yep, there's where the fly annoys me. Um, and that 
makes just for a very nice contrast to that orangey yellow uh, body of the Kodama. And uh, I'm just cleaning up edges, making sure that uh, I have a lovely... <laughs> that I have a lovely uh, crisp edge between yellow and orange. And for that it helps to have the previously painted part be really dry. So I had um, waited quite a while, I think it's like an hour or an hour 20 minutes between painting the yellow parts of the picture and then bringing in those green colors right next to them. So the paper was really dry. Uh, the color didn't run where it shouldn't go. It uh, Watercolor only flows where there's wet paper. It doesn't go to dry paper. So I'm just going back and forth with the different kinds of greens now. Um, bringing them all together, making them have a gradient transition from dark to light and uh, that makes for a very rich uh, color down there. I really like it. But I do love warm greens. It's oh, beautiful with some dark blue. Oh, oh, oh. I like that color combo. <laughs> and it's one of my go-tos, I really have to say. It might be a little boring for um, people uh, who may watch my videos for um, like some more, some more often uh, to see the same color combos that I go for. But there's like four or five um, color combos that I always reach for. And for all the other color shades, I'd like to switch things up and try something new. But I just do love the look of a warm green, warm light green and a dark blue. So uh, I had just cut out all of the... Um, blow dryer action. So the painting is dry and I'm going uh, around this piece with my Copic markers. I do have two different kinds of multi-liners with me. One of them is 1.0 millimeters. That's the one that I'm currently using. And then I do have a, a brush size, a brush tip kind of Copic multi-liner with me as well. That's the one in my right hand. And I'm just going around all the bits, outlining them quite neatly, taking my time. Uh, this is sped up to 2%, so this is um, not real time, but still you can, uh, you can imagine how slowly I actually went around the um, uh, painting to outline my little sweet Kadama. I wanted to have very clean lines, uh, very neat. I didn't want to have the black lines like too close to the um, colored item that I was outlining. So say on this flower you, you could see, I, what I didn't want to have is you could see the black outline and then on the left and on the right of that outline there would be pink paint. I really wanted the black outline to be the outline and therefore I went very slowly. And then uh, I fucked up a tiny little bit, but I will repair that in a minute. Um, I had a little bit of a smudge of that permanent black ink on my hand and transferred it to the yellow part of the Kodama. <clears throat> There, there it is. So I'm just going on top with the light yellow watercolor that I had used to color the Kodama, uh, blending out that still kind of wet or damp ink, giving the whole thing another layer. And like that, pretty much disguising that tiny little mishap. 
of uh, of mine so I'm also going around the eyes now and not coloring just across the eyes so you can now kind of see them uh, which you probably couldn't beforehand and um, just darkening up my uh, paint there a tiny bit making it so that that section doesn't stand out so I'm blending the newly added layer of color into the old layers making uh, making sure that I have very smooth edges so that I don't have like a, a splotch of water quote unquote on top even if it, it was colored water but yeah so I went on, let that dry, and meanwhile just outlined the Kodama with my black pen some more, going very slowly. And uh, in a second I will put a little bit of paper towel underneath my hand, just to make sure that I don't smudge anything again, because uh, that would have sucked and I didn't want to ruin my piece here so at the outlines now at the arms here where I can't really go over those lines that I uh, just draw had drawn in I was fine without the paper towel but as soon as I start turning my page and well am endangered to have my hand on those freshly colored lines again I will put down the um, paper towel underneath my hand and I'm just going very slowly concentrating really uh, focusing on my line work, the way I move my hands. This is actually quite a tricky part for me when I um, worked for too long on something. So uh, let's say this would have been the third or second or third video that day that I would have recorded. I would have just done the watercolor part and outlined it the next day because uh, I get exhausted a little earlier than before when it comes to just keeping my hand very steady and um, at uh, at this point I, I would have probably been very shaky with my hand would I have had other videos um, before that so yeah that's just that and that is pretty much um, almost the end of the painting. Well, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of um, white gel pen in a minute to um, uh, have a few highlights and such. But um, when it comes to techniques and supplies, this is pretty much, pretty much the end of it. <laughs> And uh, I just really liked doing this painting. I had a lot of fun, brought me uh, a lot of joy. And with these brightly, like those bright colors that I use, I think they're just uplifting, you know? And that is why I wanted to have this very almost um, cartoony illustration-y kids illustration kind of style that you, you maybe know this sort of illustration from kids books uh, I definitely wanted that because it is just a, a very lovely goofy sometimes uh, quite zen like kind of a game and um, I just really wanted that feeling uh, to be visible in my painting. That's why I chose those very bright colors. Almost the uh, children's book kind of a illustration-y style uh, of 
um, the painting and I just I just enjoyed myself. It was very uplifting, very uh, relaxing to paint this bit. The only part that was not relaxing was the moment that I, that I realized my uh, overhead camera wasn't recording, that I was just... Uh, so not professional, <laughs> but you know that's um, that happens, and I didn't, I, I wasn't annoyed with myself. I wasn't angry at myself. It's, that's just ah uh, yeah, shoot that happened. Let's um, just well do the best with what I got there. You know. Excuse me. What I really liked is um, painting board games again. So uh, I bought 20 plus games at Spiel and we've played a couple of them already and uh, I, I will definitely bring back board game art not every time on art day but I will definitely bring that sub format back because I just really enjoy it. I like to, um, well, paint my experiences and my love for board games because it, it combines two of my all time favorite things, art and board games. What's not to like? So <laughs> I guess um, that's just one of those Captain Obvious kind of things. Um, and I'm actually already having an idea for in the next game that I want to paint, but that will happen in January. So um, it's currently, it is, it is, it is, I think it's the 16th of December, so I'm pre-recording a couple of things because I don't want to work end of December because we have the kids here and I I don't want to juggle having them around and finding time to do uh, video work so uh, I will uh, come back to painting uh, in January and record videos so I think I will add a couple of board game art videos then because I do like I said we we played a couple of their games and I already have ideas in my head of what I want to paint for particular games so yeah get ready for those so back to the painting I actually found it easier to have the 1.0 millimeter um, tip uh, for the outlines and then fill in those bigger sections like the mouth and the eyes with the brush uh, tip because I use that brush tip quite a bit it's getting a little frizzled and well, fringy it's not as pristine anymore and I don't want to have weird little uh, sections colored with that pen that I don't want to have in black and that 1.0 millimeter um, pen is actually pretty good to outline and uh, have a very clean look. Now my little Kodama looks a little weird for now. She will get white highlights with um, a gel pen in a second and I had thought about maybe giving her also a little bit of a white uh, gel pen for the geometric shape on her belly. So in the game, in case you're colorblind, there's uh, geometric shapes that you could work with. And she has, I think, a circle on her belly, but I didn't go for it in the end because um, I didn't want to have white on top of yellow and I didn't want to have black outlines on the white gel pen. So I just left off with 
that and that is my video for today thank you very much for watching i hope you liked it and i'm going to see you in two weeks with a new painting